This is the digital music trends coverage of Medium 2014, an interview with uh, Luis Justo, CEO of Rock in Rio. DMT's coverage is brought to you by CI, the leading provider of digital delivery services to the independent community on ci-info.com. So hi Louis and great to have you on the show, how's it going? Yeah, doing well and nice to meet you. Yeah, absolutely nice to meet you. So first of all, you know, can you introduce Rock in Rio to viewers or listeners that might not have a be that familiar with it. All right. Rock in Rio, uh, we are completing 30 years of festival next year. So we're beginning back 1985 in Rio de Janeiro. That's why the name of the festival is Rock in Rio. And more than rock as an attitude, than the, the music style, because in Rock in Rio, you see a lot of different music styles. Yeah. There are always more than 100 different artists in every edition. And uh, back that in 1985, the project uh, was born in a way that Brazil, uh, you know, in the 80s, was a very poor country. And now we are in a, in a very good ascension. But back on that time, you can imagine that a festival to bring all the main international celebrities to Brazil, uh, it costs a lot. And the price of tickets in Brazil back on that time was as like uh, $8 uh, compared to 80, what was the usual price. So the way of of that that rock in rio needs to be you know financially uh feasible it needs to be huge in terms of audience so uh it was not a, a, a megalomany of the founder that is roberto a, a big brazilian entrepreneur but we really need to be something big in the aspect of the audience so the very first edition was 1.3 million people wow. in 98 uh, 1985 with you know all the main artists like queen with uh, freddie mercury that was was a, a really amazing performance there, but not also, you know, all the the the, the, the heavy metal sets as Idol Made in ACDC, Black Saba back that days, and pop artists. So it was a really, you know, unique for Brazil because it was the very very you know first festival that brings uh, the attention of the, the the world of entertainment to Brazil. And uh, as I was saying, it needs to be huge. Uh, in terms of audience and also uh, it needs to be a, a platform to sponsorships and brands uh, to, to make it happen. So sure. in the very first edition, uh, Brahma, that was a, a local Brazilian beer, uh, invested two, uh, $25 million in sponsorship and Rock and Rio became the campaign of, of the beer, or actually was the launch of a new beer as they want to rejuvenate the brand. And uh, it was a platform that was one year talking about Rock and Rio and the brands involved in Rock and Rio. Yeah. And since then, that's the DNA of Rock and Rio. So Rock and Rio, more than only a music festival, is a platform that communicates uh, using a lot of media partners. So every country that we are in nowadays, uh, we are in Brazil, Lisbon, uh, Spain, and we are going to US having our very first edition in Vegas 2015. Awesome. It will be May 2015. Right. And we, we, we are always with a lot of, of sponsors and brands involved and talking uh, about, you know, Rock and Rio and brands in press during the whole year. So usually uh, Rock and Rio is every other year in yeah. the country that we, we, we are. So uh, the last edition was in, in Rio in 2013. We have, uh, you know, 2015, 17 in Brazil. Uh, Lisbon, we have now in May 2014, uh, we have an edition in, in Lisbon that a lot of headliners already confirmed. So you can check it out in rockandrio.com or, or on Facebook, etc. And, uh, and we are going to Vegas. So we are beginning 2015 in US. And it will be, you know, every other year in Las Vegas as well. Yeah. And the U.S. is an interesting market because uh, there are quite a few big established festivals. And so how, how do you position yourself in the States? You know, uh, uh, Rock in Rio is a very unique festival. Uh, first of all, uh, it's, uh, it's a really premium uh, concept of festival. So uh, uh, if you go there, first we build, a, uh, we, we actually build a city. So we call our venue as a rock, uh, city of rock. In every country that we go, there is a special venue that is constructed to Rock in Rio with a lot of like premium uh, assets. So it's all artificial grass, uh, real toilets, not chemical toilets. And so very unique experience, experience that the audience and the brands can you know show up uh, in a very different way that 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 usual festivals yeah. position more a lifestyle and, uh, and, and yeah and uh, so 
and, and another thing, as I said, we are we have a lot of, of media partners involved. So uh, we are starting next March already a campaign uh, to talk about Rock and Rio. And people will understand that there is a really different kind of, of, of experience that we offer to, to this audience. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. And looking at the, the US as well, you know, you, you recently uh, uh, started a, a quite a close partnership with uh, SFX uh, in the States. So uh, how did that come about and how is that affecting the way that you operate and helping perhaps the way that you operate? Yeah, uh, SFX, you know, Bob Silliman is, is also a big entrepreneur. So first of all, I think that Roberto, that is the entrepreneur, founder of Rock and Rio and Bob, have a lot of common of being a very creative and uh, very effective in the way they approach the market. So uh, more than, you know, SFX, it's, it's more focused on the DDM market, but they, they we see, you know, together, uh, a possible collaboration of Rock and Rio expertise as Rock and Rio is really uh, unique in terms of the knowledge about communication and sponsorship. Just for you to know, uh, the last edition of Rock and Rio in Brazil in 2013, uh, we raised $52 million in sponsorship. And uh, that, that's, that is no any other festival or music show in the world that has that, that kind of, of uh, investment. And uh, uh, the brands return, so we are, we are partnering always with the same brands for the whole, the, all the, 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 the editions. That's what proves that, that there is return on, on their investment. So yeah. we really know how to uh, use our festival as a platform for brands that want to be attached to music. And SFX wants also part of this, their experience to attach to their festivals. And on the other hand, we, we think that there's a lot of synergies that we can uh, match together. Yeah, they, they have huge EGM festivals as Tomorrowland, Tomorrow World. So there are a lot of synergies and that we can put our teams together to explore not only for the US market that is the, the big you know uh, project for 2015 but also expanding for other countries Absolutely. Looking at from a technology standpoint, you know, there's two big areas that I'm interested in when it comes to festivals, which is the, the content that is generated from the festival and how that gets utilized. And on the other side, it's a more uh, on-site experience. There's a lot of companies now that are looking at uh, creating contactless technology and payments and making that experience smoother. So starting with the content side of things, so how, how do you... Uh, plan the, the you know filming and, and delivery of that content on a worldwide basis since it's a world it's a, it's a world event yeah uh, actually as I said one of the, the, the big components of rock and Rio we have a tripod that is you know uh, sponsorship uh, our audience and clients and our media partners right. so uh, we have in now all the countries that we have, we have a set of local and global media partners that are covering not only the festival, yeah, we have, you know, live streaming and on demand after the festival for all the content of what happens in Rock and Rio. But as I was saying, there is one year uh, before uh, we are communicating and, and talking about a lot of different aspects of the festival. Since, you know, the construction of the venue, uh, the relationship with the audience, relationship with the artist. Yeah. So that's plan a lot of contents that you can go in our YouTube channels. Yeah. And we part we are really partners with YouTube, Facebook, uh, uh, TV, radio stations, cable in every country that we are. So yeah. now in US, we are you know finalizing our discussions with a prime time TV uh, content for Rock and Rio to be there, cable, radio, and as as well as as digital. Yeah. So since. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, as an example, uh, I think that was in our show, the Metallica Lisbon 2012, was uh, the record of live streaming of YouTube uh, for a music uh, festival because we have all these previous work engaging yeah. our audience. And actually, uh, I, I, Rock and Rio is the biggest audience, uh, audience in terms of numbers of followers in the social right. networks. We now have more than 10 million followers in Facebook and, and Twitter and all the different social and networks. And that's also like a, a fantastic way to, for, for a festival that only happens uh, you know, uh, every couple of years to keep in touch with the audience that you have. Because of course, you know, in the 80s and, and 90s, you were doing the event, then it was all going flat, and you know nothing yeah. really was happening around it. And then you had to build up the momentum again. And this way, you can just keep it going. Yeah, exactly. As I said, we are every time improving the number of followers, and we have only this ten more than ten million followers because we really yeah. deliver content that they really want they to want. to, yeah, to exactly. see. So, uh, and that's not only in the country that happens uh, Rock in Rio, as you know that ten million uh, base is, is yeah. spread all around the world. So it's relevant content for the audience. Yeah, and looking at 
that on site experience, uh, uh, you know, uh, how are you looking at that side of things when it comes to deploying a new technology, for example, to make the festival experience smoother? Yeah, uh, we have, you know, things, uh, uh, we have all different aspects of different experiences Rock and Rio, and that's, uh, you know, just going back for another question that you said, what differentiates Rock and Rio for other festivals, we really have a lot of experience happening in Rock and Rio, and the, the, the numbers uh, show that uh, the last edition we, we sold out in four hours uh, 600,000 tickets for Rock and Rio uh, in last edition in Brazil, and 100,000 tickets was in a pre-sale that was 10 months in advance with no bands announced. So uh, what happens is that people knows that they have good got a good experience in Rock and Rio. Not only with the bands, we have the biggest you know uh, headliners in our events, but more than that, they have a really really good experience uh, in Rock and Rio. So. You, you have, you know, zip lining that you can do uh, in front of the stage during a show and a lot of different, you know, like an real amusement park and experience there. Regarding the technology, uh, yes, we are, we are, uh, some festivals are already using RFID technologies and we are going on that direction as well uh, for payment and, and, and not only that, for all those interactions with the, the brands and the, the activations that we have inside of Rock and Rio. So that already happens. Some of our sponsors have, you know, their own RFID bracelets to have all the interaction with social networks and all the brand activations there and you can uh, tell about the music that is playing on the stage yeah. directly on a face so that happens already in rock and rio but it's something that each time more we, we will invest yeah. uh, because you know uh, as i said that that content generated is not only about ourselves but about our clients and our audience as well so. of course and i finally want to ask you a, a more personal question on you know your transition uh, you moved from a, uh, what was like essential luxury uh, lifestyle brand in brazil uh, into uh, being ceo of rock and rio so how did that come about and and how did you apply some of that experience into into heading rock and rio yeah, I worked uh, 11 years in a, in, a, in a fashion company in Brazil called Osclan that is also a, a, now an international brand. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that, you know, it's a completely different industry in terms of thinking entertainment and fashion. But in the, in the other way, uh, what we do in Rock and Rio, it's all about also brand and, and experience. And uh, that brand that I used to work was based on a lifestyle experience, Brazilian lifestyle experience. And uh, and what we, we do in Rock and Rio is exactly the same. So uh, the reason of that success of being you know collaborative with with brands that 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 the, the sponsors knows that Rock and Rio brand uh, they are really constructed and protected in a way that we can borrow them a brand with some values yeah. that they can be attached to. So uh, the work was quite similar in a way that we are thinking about communication and and spread the world about the lifestyle, yeah. not all of, but about the fashion, but about the, the our festival. Or are you also looking at maybe collaborating with some of the newer, uh, maybe streaming partners to, to showcase some of the playlists or some of the artists that are, are coming to play over there? Do you think that's a component of uh, spreading the word about, about the festival? Yeah, actually, uh, we have uh, in last edition in, in Rock and Rio in the festival, we, we had a huge press area that we have de dedicated to to media, and you have from the main uh, TV news, from the bloggers, because we think that you know the variety of all the environment related to music is important, not yeah. only to spread the world, but also to bring us back, you know, some some freshness to to, to apply to the festival. Yeah. The last edition in Brazil. Just for you to know, and the, the, the numbers in Rock and Rio are always big, uh, we have a, a press area that, it, that you can have at the same time 200 journalists working inside and uh, inside the press area and we have more than 800 uh, journalists covering the, the, the festival during the, the seven days of festival that were in Brazil. The yeah. And we have, you know, for all the, uh, the journalists from all over the world and we have uh, the same will happen here in Vegas. So we really want, you know, to be in contact using all the different platforms and all the different content generators uh, to fresh. So we go, you know, from uh, New York Times for the very specific blog that is covering some music 
because we really want to spread the word. That's great. Well, thank you so much for your time. And again, uh, go and check out Rock and Rio, uh, all the various social media channels. Definitely uh, worth keeping an eye on for the great content that they put out. Uh, and uh, really look forward to seeing what you guys are going to be doing in the next uh, couple of years, especially with the debut in the US, which is really exciting. And if you are in the US, uh, which a lot of our listeners are, definitely go and check out the uh, Rock in Rio Vegas site. That's going to be in 2015, right? Yeah, exactly. As I say, we are building a special venue that will be in the strip. So, you know, uh, wow. very well located. <laughs> walking distance for all the fun <laughs> so uh, we really are expecting all your audience uh, to be there in Vegas May 2015 and have a plenty of good time with us there that sounds great uh, I, I definitely I'm gonna have to look into whether there's uh, any music industry events happening at the same time and try and plan a trip around that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. that's great all thank right. you so much for your time thank you thank you very and much and this has been the DMT coverage of medium 2014 you can find everything on digitalmusictrans.com or youtube.com slash digitalmusictrans